Hello, um, it's Authentic Gay Blog here. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, complex post traumatic stress injury and suicidal ideation. So I have both um, both of those situations, or I live with both of those issues, should I say. Um, excuse my um, voice and breathlessness. Um, I have heart failure, um, or I'm in heart failure, so um, it gets, sometimes it's worse and it's not so good at the moment. Um, partly because of a lot of stresses in my life. So, to give you some kind of context of where I'm at, the last three months I've had a wasp infestation where I live. Um, the pest control people came out um, four times, and it's been going on three months, four times to kill various nests. In the last um, week, so from last Tuesday to this Wednesday, I had over 200 wasps in my kitchen. And as you can imagine, that is quite stressful. Um, also have various medical things going on. So I've got a condition called neurofibromatoma, which is these things here. Um, Google it. I suggest if you want to know about it. It's too complicated to explain, so don't ask any questions in the comments because it is very complicated to explain. So anyway, I've got over 200 of these throughout my body. One here is due to be removed. There's another one which is close to my kidney or liver on this side. Another one that's here somewhere that is causing issues. Um, so. I've had two biopsies on this one which have been inconclusive and they planned a third biopsy and they also plan to remove the one here which they biopsied last year and has got um, unusual cell activity so they want to remove it. Important, okay? So I try to organise so that the biopsy and this surgery here could be done at the same time and hopefully this one here as well because um, when they said they were going to do the surgery on this one here, they are going to go keyhole that way in to get it out and remove it and take it out because it's close to the bowel and it's close to something else as well. So they're going to do it through keyhole surgery. That's what they told me in the consultation. That's what they told me in a phone call two or three weeks ago. And they said they were going to do the biopsy at the same time because I said I didn't want to have three surgeries or three procedures quite close together. You get me, yeah? Okay, so. <coughs> that was all going on. So there's all these things going on. Also planned to do some kind of pill cam test to see it, to, to look at the bowel condition that I've got, because I've got three chronic health conditions. So trying to look at the bowel condition, so we're going to do something for that. Um, and I've also just been diagnosed with ADHD as well, very late in life. And then two weeks ago, three friendships ended. I take responsibility for my part in that. So I was responsible for the unkind words that I said. Now, one of my medications. Um, I said some unkind words about an individual. Now, whenever I say unkind words about somebody, it's either because I've been A, provoked, or B, triggered, or C, both of those things. So I said some unkind words in response to something on a post on Facebook and a comment about that. And I removed that person from my feed, 
so they didn't have to see my negative Facebook comments um, and I removed them from my feed told another individual I got a, a WhatsApp message two weeks ago saying I'd done this I'd said that I'd said this which was both true but they were said as a joke I wasn't being serious and then the thing about this other individual and how I said it with attitude and blah 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 and how I'd been unfair to this individual by complaining about it on Facebook um, even though it was one paragraph about the negative comment and the rest was about my life circumstance and the situation that I'm dealing with and that I would love to post positive comments on Facebook about how happy I am and how great my life is going, what a wonderful partner I've got and how brilliant holiday I'm having and great times I'm having socialised and I would love, love, love to post about that. But my life isn't like that. So there's some negative posts. So anyway, he ended the friendship. The other person has also ended the friendship because I'm blocked. She's blocked me on Facebook and um, I take full responsibility for my part in that. I said some very unkind things which were spare the moment because I felt provoked and triggered at the same time. Um, also, also, there was a, a complete lack of empathy and compassion for my situation and I've been very, very generous to both of these individuals as well. So, you know, balance. Anyway, that is what it is. So, pain medication. So, this operation was planned for last Tuesday. Now, they'd already called me in for a pre-op consultation at the start of August, where I contracted COVID in the hospital. Thank you very much. And then they called me in two weeks ago um, on the Thursday for another pre-op consultation and a test to see if my heart could tolerate the operation. The nurse at the pre-op consultation said, what are you doing here? I said, I'm here for my pre-op. She goes, you don't need to be here. I could have gone on the f over on the phone about your medication. I said, anyway, I'm back on Sunday for a COVID test. She goes, why are you coming for a COVID test? I go, because I've been called in for one. And I explained on the phone that I'd had COVID. And she said, well, you don't need a COVID test because you will test positive for COVID on the COVID test, even though you don't have it because you had it two months ago. All right, so there you go. Then I got two letters saying I needed to come in. This was two days later. I got two letters and I needed to go in for a COVID test. I went all the way into the hospital, Sunday before the operation, um, got there and was told I didn't need to come in for a COVID test, but I needed to isolate. I then had to move an MRI appointment related to the neurofibromatoma because I have an MRI every 18 months to two years, because they can cause so many problems and complications. I had to cancel that. I'd already cancelled the previous one in August because of COVID. It meant I would be taken off the list and removed from the, way, the list of, 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 of scans and have to go back to the beginning again. I was due for the pill cam test for this week. I cancelled that because I, it had explained to me about the surgery and the stomach and things like that. And as this is going into the bowel and the intestine, I cancelled it. I get into the hospital on the Tuesday and um, they take me to this little room in a ward and I joked that I'd with a guy, oh, I put Beyond Sweet and I've got my own room. The surgeon comes in and tells me they're doing a completely different surgery. Now, they're not doing the surgery they told me about, they're doing a different one. And it had been explained to me that I'd be in hospital for three to five days because they need to monitor me for 24 to 48 hours, monitor my heart and keep me wired up to heart machines 
to make sure my heart's okay and that because it's a complicated procedure I could be in for five days so I planned for all of that and then they said they weren't doing that surgery they were going in here making an incision here and they might remove the wrong one because it's too close together and I was overwhelmed because I made plans and, and, and stuff of that so then they left me in this room for two and a half hours on my own and the guy comes in and I can tell, I can tell it's not good news. And he said, there's a problem finding me a bed. So I would have to go to the high dependency unit for probably 24 hours after my operation. Now, that would mean someone from the high dependency unit would have to move to another bed within the hospital. And the problem was there was no other beds in the hospital. So that person couldn't be moved. I just said, well, look, if it's that much of a problem, I'll go home after the operation, which is silly, really, because, you know, they're supposed to monitor me. He said, well, you can't do that. Leave it with me. You've gone half an hour, and I couldn't take any more. I was so triggered because of the complex post-traumatic stress injury, you know, so triggered by all of this stuff going on, you know, that um, I walked out of the hospital, but I walked through the ward, there were like four or five nurses at the nurses station no one stopped me no one asked me where I was going no one questioned why I was leaving I walked out an hour later I get a phone call saying where was I I was at this point in Tesco's having a meltdown because the till wasn't working and loads of stuff going on and I had a proper meltdown in Tesco's you know came out and they and they phoned me asked me where I was I said look I've left the hospital I couldn't take it anymore and she goes well we found you a bed now I goes well can you come back to the hospital I said no I can't come back to the hospital I said look I'm overwhelmed I'm going to go home and kill myself that's how I feel now this is suicide ideation I just thought the only way out was for me to end my life when I got home and I said I'm really sorry I can't talk to you so I put the phone down okay and then I got home and my printer's not working so I've got to buy a new printer so I've had all this going on with a person who has severe heart failure a very complicated painful neurological condition a bowel condition which I'm having to self-medicate for because um, I'm not being treated on the NHS and the only way I can medicate myself is this stuff and I overwhelmed does not come close to and I'm dealing with this all on my fucking own. I couldn't even get an emergency therapy for appointment with my therapist because she had no no slots available. Look, I'm going to show you something. In here, so you see that I'm not lying. In here is 200 times 100 gabapentin capsules that have been emptied and the powder put in here there is 40 30 milligram coding capsules emptied and put in here this is this is my suicide plan I've been told that this would absolutely end me you know and i come very close on many 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 fucking occasions to putting this powder in a glass of water and taking it you know and if you're going to make make negative comments make fucking negative comments it will say more about you than it does about me it will indicate what type of fucking cunt you are what type of heartless shitty human being you are but you will need to me to make comments on someone who's been authentic about their mental health and suicide ideation. This is the fucking truth. And if you have suicide ideation, you are thinking I am thinking about suicide on almost a daily bloody basis. A daily basis. Sometimes incessantly in my mind. Like the situation 
with these friendships ending unless I did a thing in my head it would play with scenarios and, and the situation will go round and round and round and round and round and round and round in my head incessantly in the last two weeks I've had no more than four hours sleep at night because of all this stuff I didn't ask for my childhood to happen I didn't ask that when my brain was developing in the first five years of my life I didn't ask for it to develop in a completely different way to a normal brain I didn't ask for my brain to be developed to be highly strung highly aroused hyper high, um, hyper vigilant or hypo vigilant I didn't ask for my brain to be that way it developed that way due to external forces on me it developed that way due to the stress my mum underwent while she was pregnant with me and all of those stress hormones flooding me as a fetus in the womb that was developing none of it I've asked for and I struggle and I work so fucking hard to manage all of this it's, it's untrue now if I was able to use all the energy that I put into just fucking existing just living just existing on a day to day fucking basis maybe I would have been a lot more successful in my life you know so you know suicide ideation ideate, idolation is real it is, I'm telling you it's fucking real I've got my notes I've got my suicide note I have my fucking letter about not wanting a funeral because I don't deserve one I've got my letter about what's to happen with my worldly goods my pension all of that and this you know so yes this is a long video <laughs> it's longer than I had intended to and my phone's going off because my dinner's cooking in the oven you know it is real but people like me who are living with this with these challenges fight every single fucking day to overcome them and it really really is not easy it's not easy at all